Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and I'm here with my dad, Pastor Craig Roders. What's up? Today we have our part two conversation with Alex, and last week was our part one, so you guys can go back and watch that. That'll be in the description below. So now here's our part two conversation with Alex Arustamov. What do you think of this? I want to ask you this, Alex. I really believe, you know, doing this a while, that really, you know, as you said, scales in your eyes. You're very smart. You were studied, so it wasn't like you were ignorant, didn't study anything, but yet you said you were blinded, right? And we just read that held, being held captive by Satan to do his will and that pray that they may escape, that having been held captive by him to do his will and they may escape from the snare of the devil being held captive. So there's a snare of the devil. There's a blinding. There's a deception. But I really believe that in Matthew 15 or 18, 15, I think 18, binding and loosing, where Jesus said, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, whatever you loose. And I really think for our friends that don't know Christ or in the new age or whatever yeah. in the gay lifestyle, to really pray that the demonic spirits Amen. that oppress them and vex them and blind them would be bound, right? We can't violate someone's will. We can't say, Lord, make them a Christian because God, I believe, honors free will. But we can say, Lord, those spirits that deceive them, speak those, whisper those lies in their head, you're worthless, you might as well kill yourself, nobody likes you, that we could bind that. We have that authority in Christ. Amen. And to say, Lord, loose your Holy Spirit of truth to where, like you, or just yeah. heard that voice, hey, listen to the song. Even though it was a secular song, God, God still it. said, hey, for some hope, yeah. to say, hey, don't hear all the, the death voices of the demonic, but hear, even though there's a secular song, hear the hope that there is a hope, and God was preparing you mm. to give your life to him. And we need to really, I think we need to really pray, even though it's very simplistic, mm -hmm. but everything, as you know, right, is very mm -hmm. spiritual. Right, you think, oh, that's just those just little black clouds in my room. Those weren't really demons or whatever. And we try, or those are guides. We try to make it good, but you know, I mean, usually when you see those things, it's very terrifying. You kind of get a fearful thing. Mm -hmm. So why would you be terrifying? And now, and, or like I said, my friends saw them as good, and then they turn into terrifying beings. Right, they manifest who yeah. they really were. So we need to. I think we really need to pray that. Right? Would you concur? with where you've come from is just really pray for someone like yourself, the old you yeah. that really say, Lord, bind those demonic spirits, right? If there's a parent listening, bind those demonic spirits who are lying to my son or daughter yeah. and, or anyone, uncle, aunt, yep. uh, father, mother, and just really loose your Holy spirit of truth, loose holy angels to minister to them and to prepare the way and, 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 and just really prepare and them. Because, the choice is up to them after yeah, that. Yeah. But. Because it's like, you know, no man will be with excuses says in Romans Amen. one, but we need to pray to give it people as much of a fighting chance as possible. We don't understand the, you know, the free sovereignty. will, the sovereignty of God. We know that God is sovereign and we know that man has free will. Now, how does that perfectly reconcile? But People there is a reason you know, for us yeah. to minister and to witness and, to and evangelize and pray. So yeah. we do have a part yeah. in that. But um, I want to talk about the – did you ever get into – because did you like Harry Potter and, like, Halloween? What was that that side of it for you? Was that ever – Not so much into Harry Potter. Harry um, Styles, though. Just kidding. Harry <laughs> Different Harry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Harry. Cool Harry. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, but that's – I went to like Universal Studios and I like rode all the rides and I was like this is pretty swag this is cool and like I have like a Snape wand but I never was like into it like hardcore like yeah Harry Potter magic type thing but um Halloween was my favorite thing ever um it would I don't know it just I don't know if this has like something to do with my lost identity but it just gave me the opportunity to be something that I wasn't so like the idea of dressing up was like fun for me because I was like, oh, I'm not Alex. I'm a unicorn. I don't know. Yeah. So it would just it would be fun because one, you get candy <laughs> and two, because it's like an excuse to hang out with your friends and just go around and like have fun. But then it just became this like sinister thing because it's there's de literally dead bodies on people's lawns and people are like oh, decoration. That's cute. And it's it's not. And it, so it's kind of, it blinds you in a way to where you see that and you're like, that's okay. Like, that's normal. That's not weird in any way when really little kids are terrified of it. Like, you're not supposed to think that's normal. It's mm. it just, it's a euphemism for death. Yeah. It's a euphemism for Satan. And it's I, it's, I think it's Satan's way of introducing little kids into his world. Yeah. yeah. One, yeah. Guy, one guy said this. 
uh, Christians celebrating Halloween is like Jews celebrating Hitler's birthday. Yeah. It's just, it's yeah. totally mm-hmm. backwards. It's wrong. What does light have in common with darkness? Nothing. We shouldn't. And then they also make it where like death, like so many kids are desensitized, like into video games and all this stuff to where when you're hearing voices to kill yourself, you're thinking, oh, it's fine. Like death isn't like as, but then these young children who are in middle school and high school since COVID, like suicide rate for kids has gone up and right. You were close to doing that. And that's what Satan does. It's like, oh, it's not a big deal because they see death all the time and it's glorified. Yeah. So to them, suicide yeah. isn't, it's just kind of something like they don't really say like, because especially with the new age, you don't know. You're like, oh, you're not afraid of going to hell. Yeah. You, all you yeah. think is I'll be in a better place. Yeah. Well, there's old, there's an old song in the seventies by blue o- oyster cults called don't fear the reaper we can be like they are mm. you know romeo and juliet just kind of making like death yeah. i remember hearing that song saying hey it's cool it's not a it's not it's not forever right yeah. you have many lives and yet the bible says in what uh, hebrews nine twenty five, it's once for a man to die and then the judgment right but we want to the new age will tell you or or you know many religions will say you have many lives right and uh, but that's not true no and so what are some other things alex before we get into the the good part of you you know finding the lord and well first marcia and caden and them but what are some other things that you would like to share before we get into that um well kind of just i also just the jokes as well like of this time because um if you like listen into a conversation between two gen z kids it's very likely that you're going to hear them talk about depression and anxiety and just joke about it instead of trying to help each other. And um, if you go through TikTok, I guarantee you there's going to be like at least five TikToks about like people talking about killing themselves and like or how that's really funny. Mm. And so I would just kind of say to steer away from that humor because just actually try to help the person instead of helping them with it because that's again like it desensitizes it even more so then it's like oh okay well now it's kind of funny in a morbid way so yeah yeah Yeah. it's weird how yeah it's crazy how satan doesn't really change that much i mean he uses new technology with tiktok and and you know all the things all the Sicker, media yeah. stuff but it's crazy like when i was a kid you know i'm four i'm 59 49 i was gonna say 49 <laughs> i want to be but uh, 59 how it's like my friends and i we just all were thinking we'll get high we'll go in a car and we'll put the exhaust the tube from the exhaust and it'll be cool and we all die and our school feels sorry for us and you know just kind of mm-hmm. like for attention you know and it was just weird how it's still out there you know that suicide is cool it's not forever. It's not going to cost, you know what I mean? I'm thinking, because my best friend killed himself, and I'm thinking, you know, and I, I got so mad at him because he came to my house and said, is Jesus really the answer? And I said, dude, look at my life. And I got him into drugs because I cheat off him. He was really smart. And uh, and I felt so bad, but he knew Jesus was real because Jesus drew him to uh, to my house mm-hmm. and uh, it was a long story but anyway but he just he slid his wrist and wrote on the wall of his, of his uh, apartment life has no meaning life isn't yeah. real so he rejected and I got so kind of God why and God said who drew Glenn to your house at three in the morning and I go you did Amen. and he goes who rejected who because I he said I said can I pray for you and then he goes you're not gonna trick me this blank and Jesus stuff and you know what I mean? And so we know that now. I don't understand the heart of man. Like, why did I surrender to God and my friend Glenn, who I got involved in it, and he saw my life change? I don't know that, but like you know, we need to tell our as many people as we can the truth because, as you said, there are so many people hurting, and Satan doesn't care how he gets you. Nope. He just wants you. And it's it's even though it's packaged differently, it's the same old thing: death. You know, identity, you're fat, you're ugly, nobody likes you. Why? Yeah. Well, you just got attacked with that today, right? Mm-hmm. You know, this person rejected us. It was going to be on the podcast. Mm-hmm. And he's like, man, I just want to quit. I mean, yeah. and, and you're doing well. But isn't that crazy? How you can just be like, everything's good. He's like, you just quit. Nobody cares about you. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, and we need to really, I believe, well, the only way we can really fight that is with Christ, right? Amen. To know our identity is in Christ. It isn't about how many people go to our church, how many, how many people like us, Instagram. how many followers, how perfect my body is. Because, I mean, hey, I used to have a really good body, <laughs> and that thing has waved by by to me a long time ago. So if I'm basing my identity in my body, I'm done, right? I'm going to go home right now. 
but we need to find out who we are in Christ because there's a lot of people who have the, quote, perfect body who hate themselves yep. too, right? That's I right. mean, like I was saying, the most miserable people are celebrities and rock stars who have everything, yet they have nothing. And the best way, I'm going to say this, I'm going to preach a little bit. Can I preach here? But <laughs> is great. the best way to have identity or have, have, have worth is the Bible says those who refresh others, they themselves should refresh. Amen. As you give Christ in you away, as you encourage and bless others, the Bible says in, in Proverbs eleven twenty five, you're going to be refreshed. But you live for self, feed me, love me, tell me how beautiful I am, tell me how great I am, you're going to be the most empty person there are. But if you say, mm -hmm. Lord, help me to bless others, help me to encourage others, like you said, if you see someone on, on something talking about death, that you could say, hey, Jesus said that he came that, that you might have life and life more abundantly. Mm -hmm. That's when you have the joy. And I'll tell you, and I think you can read this, Alex, even though you're a young Christian, is there's no greater joy mm. than being used by God. That is the greatest yeah. high. I did a lot of drugs, but there's no greater thrill than Amen. being used by Christ. When someone says, wow, you know, Pastor Craig, when you're rambling about whatever, God <laughs> spoke to you to me and touched me. That is such a thrill because that knows that I'm not God. It's not like New Age, but that I was a vessel that God could flow through. And that's what we all, so I encourage if someone's yeah. listening who's empty, who has says my life stinks, then I would say, don't be like my friend, Glenn, and pull the trigger, but give your life to Christ, right? Thank you can you. always pull the trigger, but try Christ. Give your life to Christ today because that's, yeah. yeah, today's the day of salvation Amen. because that's that's where life is. It really is in Christ. And I mean, and I, you know, I got saved when I was 18, but I mean, I partied like three lifetimes. I mean, I gave <laughs> everything a try and I was so empty. And I, and I came to Christ having everything. You know, but I was so empty. And the Lord spoke to me yeah. and says, Craig, I had 24000 in the bank as an 18-year-old back in 81. The Lord's like, it doesn't matter if you have 24000 or $24 million, you're going to still be the same guy. And I went, whoa. Mm -hmm. And that was depressing. And so we need to, I guess I say it to those that say, hey, I'm not all that. It doesn't matter. Because even though people who have supposedly all that on media and social media, whatever, yeah. they're still empty, too. Oh, and they yeah. still commit suicide. They still get divorced. They still uh, are drunks, uh, alcoholics and druggies. And so we need to say, hey, what is the answer? It's Jesus. This thing we fight that we say doesn't believe, exist is the answer. I remember when I, I I'm sorry, I preach here. But I remember when I got saved, I went like you. I went, are you telling out of all the things in the world, Jesus is the answer. I thought it was going to be some new age, you know, snatch the pebble, some kung fu thing. I'm going, Jesus is the, are you kidding me? I, I knew this my whole life and I didn't know it. You know, and so it's Satan anyway. does everything yeah. that I go against it. But I want you to share, Alex, because. <laughs> yeah, my dad will talk. No, no, no. <laughs> the part of you getting saved, because honestly, that's like the main part of this whole thing. It's not glorifying death we don't want to get like your past and all that but praise god he did snatch you from a lot of things you know in testimonies we like a lot of times they want to pull stuff so it's like a cooler testimony yeah. this is the whole point of your story is that he saved you at a young age you were like if give you three more years if you being 18 that would have been scary like that would have been scary god saved you at the perfect time mm. And that's where I want you to also share to young people that you don't have to go through all of this to know it's bad. Because people are probably thinking, well, Alex, you haven't tried drugs and alcohol and sex and pornography. Like, how do you know? And it's like, uh-uh. Like, thank the Lord that he saved you before you had to get Amen. into all of that. Yeah. So share um, in January what that was like. You took your shot of vodka, right, at the new <laughs> year and then... January comes along. Was it Russian vodka? Of course. Uh, but so can you share a little bit first about your, your sister, Marsha? She comes to our church. We love Caden and Marsha. Yeah. Um, baby Luca. Well, baby, I call Luca. him baby Luca, but Luca. Um, he just has birthday, right? Three years old. Um, and then yeah. Maddie and Riley, the twins. They just got dedicated like a month or so on Father's Day, hmm. which was so cute. But... um. Can you share? They're obviously not here. Maybe one day they'll share their testimony. But share a little bit about them coming to the Lord and then your sister reaching out to you. Yeah. Um, so my grandpa died in December. So it was like sort of this big thing that happened to all of us, obviously. And um, so that's when my sister and I really started talking because we never were that close. We were just kind of sisters. Yeah. But um, during that entire process, like I was at home, I was literally trapped at home with my dad and my grandma. And then my mom was like in the hospital and I literally thought she was going to die. Like I was just in a very dark spot. And so my sister and I would FaceTime all day. And um, 
so we kind of talked about spiritual things then, and she was like doing tarot card readings mm-hmm. um, to just kind of determine the future, which was weird. But um, so she was like all spiritual and all that stuff and all new agey. And then so one day my sister FaceTimes my mom and I, and she was asking about Catholicism versus Protestantism. And so I like learned about it during school, just like the differences and I was like giving her all the facts and I was like yeah but you'll never do that right because that's Christianity like you're that's weird (laughs) and um the next time my sister facetimes me she's like (laughs) she's like hey um I think I'm Christian now I don't know how to describe it I I, think think... a new person and I was like I was like this is what cult are you in (laughs) And then, um, so I was like, okay, well, I'm Christian too. And she was like, oh, okay, yeah. And so she kept on talking about it. She was like, it's just this unconditional love. Like, I just feel like a new person. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. And I thought she was honestly just kind of still new agey because I had no idea what it was. But then she was persistent. Um, with it and she would send me verses and I'd be like oh okay whatever and so one day it was January 14th um we were FaceTiming and she was burning all of her new age books and um so I was like okay that's interesting let me give it a try so I took out my manifestation journal ripped all the pages out and then threw them in the fire well I like threw them in the fireplace and then I like put a match to it and it wasn't lighting. So I was like, okay, God, if you're real, do your thing. <laughs> and then did you not, the paper literally split in half with fire and just burst <laughs> into flame. Oh, wow. like, That's crazy. And I was crying and shaking. Cause I was like, what's going on? And I was like freaking out and I just had no idea what was happening. And then and I was just like, you know what? Pretty? No, I'm kidding. Just decent no, it was God. I'm teasing. No, but I'm saying the demon maybe was like oh, screaming out of it. Oh, like what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. That was for the Wizard of Oz. So just here. You don't believe in wizards. <laughs> oh, golly. And just Smack kidding. me down. Just okay, kidding. that's nice. So it burst into flames, the manifestation journal that you had? Yeah, and so after that, I was like shaking, crying, all that stuff, and I was like, I'm going to order a Bible because obviously something about this is real. And um, I woke up the next day, and I was like, because, like, that was the first time I woke up, and I wasn't sad. Because, like, my emotions were, like, always less sad and really sad. Like, I was never happy. So that was the first time I woke up, and I was like, I don't have, like, I don't feel, like, what is this? Like, why do I feel so light and airy? And I, like, came to school, and I was telling my two friends, I was like, guys, Jesus is the way. Like, I don't know what it is. I just feel so much love. Like, I've never felt this way before. Like, I just want to tell everyone about him. Like, there's just so much light in it. And I'm just not depressed anymore. And I know it's only been, like, two hours. But, like, I just have never felt this way before. And they were like, okay, like, that's nice. That's crazy. <laughs> um, so I just kind of went through that. And then... Um, the day I got my Bible, I like put it on my bedside table. And, um, so I had two days where the enemy was attacking me. It was kind of scary, but obviously I had Jesus. So I was, I was chilling, but, um, so I was sleeping well, trying to sleep and I'd like wake up every 30 minutes, like gasping and like looking at my doorway, thinking like that there was something staring at me. And I was like, this is creepy. And then, um, so one time I woke up like, I think it was around three o'clock in the morning, which is terrifying. And um, I just like felt this angry like spirit just like there. And then like two seconds after I woke up, I just feel this like wind blowing against me and it's like getting closer and closer. And then so I grab my Bible and I just start reading it. And it was I had no idea what was going on because it was New King James. And I was like, what's happening? And it was Genesis. So I was just really confused. But I was just like reading the bible and like the air was like still blowing on it and like my window was closed my fan was off wow. so i don't know if it was like a demon or something but um i just eventually rebuked it and it was gone and it was like peaceful but then i just 
couldn't go back to sleep, so I just read the Bible for us in the morning. And then the next night, I was woken up at 1 in the morning by, like, feeling something sit down on my bed. And I rebuked it in the name of Jesus, and it was gone. But I couldn't sleep. So I just had, like, those two days of attacks. And then um, that was, like, my only, like, scary encounters with the enemy after being saved. Um, but I did kind of end up losing my friends because of being Christian, I, like, one of them had, like, a conversation with me where she was, like, you're always talking about God and, like, I'm not having an okay relationship with him right now, so, like, please stop talking about him, like, you're being annoying, kind of, like, that kind of thing, and I was, like, I've talked about him twice, (laughs) and she was just, like, I know, but it's just, it's too much for me, and I was, like, okay, like, that's fine. And then um, actually the two days before that, I like FaceTimed her and I was talking about this one other Christian kid um, who has like a TikTok and he was talking about like why the LGBT community is bad. And so I like brought him up in our conversation. I was like, yeah, he's such a great kid. Like I love him so much. She was like, really? He's homophobic. And I was like, the Bible actually says this. And she was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And then she started yelling at me and then she hung up and then had that conversation with me. And I was like, okay, that's fine, I guess. Um, And obviously, I was really sad. But then um, my sister texted me Trin's number, and now she's my best friend. So that's awesome. Praise God. And Trinity doesn't have a lot of friends. So it was just so cool that God brought you at the perfect time when you were losing your friends. And Trinity, right, she's kind of like an only child. You know, I'm I'm, I'm still at a house. But Trinity, she's like, we're eight years apart. So kind of little like you and... Marsha but it's just cool to see her have a friend like like you who's just on fire for God and just like the things and the insight you have from like reading the word like because you're in Phoenix but your your sister and their family come here and so you would sometimes do the Wednesday studies and then they would share what you had said and I'm like she's only 15 at that this time you were probably saved for like two months or like not even and the things you would say I was like God truly just right. like once you're blind, right? Like Saul to yeah. Paul transformation, new creation, like Second Corinthians. It was just so beautiful to see that because you're so young, and most kids feel like like we were saying they have to experience all that. And still, you being what grade are you in? Are you a freshman or a sophomore? I'm gonna be a junior. Okay, so She's smart. same thing. Like it's you're where these kids like you're not cool now right you're that homophobic loser kid now that's you but yeah you're like i don't care like obviously it hurts you're still not going to deny the fact that it hurts and it's painful but what are some things that you also are going through with going through school because before it was online school but now you're in school so how is that at school do you now have friends do you share the truth do like what does that look like for you yeah, so I, after I lost that one friend, I can I like separated from my lunch group and like we have this thing called Lyceum where it's like free time you can like go whatever do whatever and so during those two times I would just like be separate and just have my Bible open and like be studying so I'd be doing Wednesday night study or I'd just be reading for my own enrichment and um, there would be people who'd come up to me like just random kids that I don't really know. Um, Some of them were Christians. They were like, what are you reading? Like, what's going on? And I'd be like, hey. And so it would be that type of thing. Or people would be like, why are you reading the Bible? And I'd be like, oh, well, I was recently saved. And, like, I would have, like, a 10-minute, no, sorry, 10-second, like, time, time, I don't know, 10-second, like, uh, mm, I would be able to, like, tell them about Jesus in the, like 10 seconds before they'd like just keep walking but um I had times like that and then um one of my friends um now she actually texted me and she was like hey I've been thinking about like being Christian for a while like I had some friends up in Michigan and like I spent some time with them and like it just seems so cool can we talk about it and I was like yes of course so I talked to her and I like she was just asking me questions about you know like the hard topics I guess about like homosexuality and abortion and all that stuff and so I was just giving her scripture to kind of help her 
just understand like the reasons why because that's what I realized what was wrong with me I didn't have the reason why I just yeah. had the reason yeah. and um so I'm still working on getting her to sort of completely give her life to Christ but um she'll have conversations with me about it and um I'll sometimes send her verses so working on her and then I made a couple of friends who are Christians um so I'm hoping to get that friendship going this year and sort of be able to study the word with them cool. during school but yeah and our prayer is one day that you can come yeah. down here yeah. that's just something yeah. i'm praying for do you have a do you have a do you go to church with your parents still or do you have a oh, it's armenian have, right do you have a good church or you're not <laughs> able to really go to church i so i watch the live stream service here mm-hmm. for um calvary or valley and then i'll so i'm actually running bible city at my parents church right now so then i'll like after service i'll get ready and then head over to their church okay. to run Bible. so you don't have a really a church there that's really like what you would like uh, mm-hmm. okay no that's no. why she comes here as much as she can yeah. she actually did bbs we love with you. us and we want you. Yeah. You want you we here. We selfishly like you down here, even though amen. your parents want you. One of these days. One yeah. of these days. Yeah. But yeah. By the amen. God. Yeah. Amen. But I just, I just love that about your story is that just how, even though there are things where kids are like, oh, well, you're not cool, but yet Christ is cool. Like as mm-hmm. much as it's like, oh, Jesus freak. But you do see that. You see the people. Um, I don't have TikTok, but I have seen videos of people or who are on Instagram and stuff and they've like have TikToks and they're literally just speaking straight up scripture mm-hmm. and Bible and they're young like you. And it's just cool to know that like that's how you were kind of saved too. Who got saved? Um someone in my oh, dad's Bob like Dylan. see yeah, yeah. Oh Bob Dylan. He's like, yeah, see you can be a Christian and still be cool yeah. or be cool because yeah. that's the thing that kids are looking for, all the trends and what's going on and and that's what I still struggle with to this day. I see these young girls, and I'm like, they're way prettier and way together and more mature looking than me. And so I'm starting to get, like, these things from these young kids, and God's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Your identity needs to be in me, not in these trends. Like, you're not a kid. You're not a little kid anymore. But it's just reminding us that the only truth and the only thing we'll find, because I'll tell everyone out there, I've tried everything. I've not everything in the world, but like things like, oh, if I dye my hair this color, if I if I get these eyelashes, if I do this with my nails, if I do this, if I try this, then I'll be happy. And God's like, are you done? Do you realize none of that's making you happy or feel more beautiful? Like you need to just yeah. be in the word and pray. And Second Timothy 2.22, I say it like a broken record, but it's for young kids, old people, it doesn't matter what age but run and flee from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, pursue mm-hmm. righteous living, faith, and love. And then this is the, the thing that you're realizing. It's bad company corrupts good moral, but it says enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord a pure heart. So your friendship with Trinity, like that has blessed yeah. her. And I know that it's just something where when you start realizing like you're both sisters in Christ, it's so much closer than a worldly friendship mm-hmm. where you're just talking. And yeah, about iron them. sharpens iron. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's funny, like, cause I lost all my friends, you know, we used to say we drank your drugs. So we friends forever. I got your back, bro, forever. And then as soon as I became a Christian, they're calling me an effing born again, spitting in my face. Mm-hmm. And these are guys that I could beat up easily. And I didn't understand the demonic. I'm like, what is going on? I've been a Christian a week and you're not afraid of me. I mean, this is crazy. I still could lose it, but it was like, you know, and I realized, but it was like, what does it mean to gain the whole world? Amen. Your soul in the strife? Amen. I mean, Amen. I was, my, it's like, there's a cute story. Uh, so I was told Mariah used to be pretty popular in high school before <laughs> Christ. And she goes, dad, seriously, really? No, and so I she checked you. with the guy who led me to Christ and he goes, no, your dad was actually popular. Believe it or not. But it was <laughs> like, but it, my point is it was, I it was, I had everything, but was so empty. So yeah. it's funny. I, I heard Billy Graham, I think say it this way. Many of us are like greyhound dogs on a greyhound track, you know, where they chase the rabbit. And then very yeah. few people get the rabbit, meaning success, whatever that is to them, perfect body you know a lot of views or whatever a lot of followers but he says but once you get it they realize how empty it is Amen. and that's the thing True. it's like you know so the satan is keeping everyone on this track to run for whatever quote successes in their eyes and then they realize they get it it's empty and there's always got to be more i mean there's this uh, famous actor 
uh, in the old days who was like he was 80 years old, 85, and he's still doing like Texaco, the gas station commercials. And people said, you're worth like a hundred million dollars. Why are you doing these stupid commercials? He goes, how long do you think that's going to last? And it's like it's never enough. And we yeah. need to we need to realize that. And so it's like even though you lost your friends, you realize they really weren't your friends because they were really your friends. They would have stayed with you and say, hey, I'm not so hip. And I, I kind of have a cool story with this. I don't know. I, don't, I guess I like to talk about myself. But but uh, all my friends, you know, we're hippies, right? So we're cool. And we just love everybody except, right? And then w- we, I said to my friends, hey, I'm going to get, I'm into Jesus. And they're all kind of like, whoa, dude, what are you doing? So I said, I'm just going to read my Bible and you can get high in front of me. I had a bunch of weed. I, I somehow, I let them have all my weed. That was all right. Like it was natural. But all my cocaine, all that other stuff, I had to get rid of all my pills, got rid of that. So they're getting high in front of me. And I said, we just had this kind of like smoke out where for like three days I just read my Bible. They they got high. And all of a sudden, after three days ago, man, Rotors, you make us feel like beep. And I go, what? I haven't said a word. I've just been reading my Bible. And it's just like you said, the spirit of God. I mean, they just kind of go, something is different in you. And it makes us I go because our deal was I won't preach Christ to you. You don't try to get me high. And that's the deal. And I will be cool. You be cool. But just me give. And I didn't even I knew nothing. I couldn't preach if I wanted to. All I could say is, man, Jesus is cool. Like you said, it seems real. And people. But it's amazing how everything, again, is spiritual where they could just smell. Okay. Rotors is a nut. Something's different now. And they just ran like rats off a sinking mm-hmm. ship. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Like in that conversation, she was like, you just changed overnight. Like, I don't even know who you are anymore. And I was like, hey, that's cool. Yeah. Like, God. It. it works. It works. Uh, they testify more about you than you testify about what God's done. Amen. Amen. Yeah, and crazy. so what are some things, because you've been saved now. It's been like, so January 14th, so like six months. It's been like, yeah, six months. Yeah. Um. So what are some five struggles half, you could five say? And a half. Yeah, five. Not even quite. Is it six, not six? Just coming in six months. So the fifth. You got the fourteenth. So today's the eighth. It's oh, not a even. More days. It's, yeah. it's almost not even six, six months. months. Almost six months. But what are some things? Because not all easy, right? Satan wants to still attack you even more so because you're going for Christ. So he's gonna try to pull you down. So what are some things you would say for people to fight the good fight and keep on, keep to on. yeah to not go back or look back um well i would just say to continue reading your bible i know that's very like it's over said but literally there's so much truth to it because it is the truth you know john 8 32 truth will set you free mm-hmm. so just keep reading it and just keep putting your faith in god and just keep knowing that he's there for you and that he is a stronghold, that he is your refuge. And um, he's always there for you. You know, he is your best friend. You don't need best friends because you have God. Um, and I would, I don't know, something that really helped me was watching Stephen Van Carr's videos. I absolutely love him and his testimony. So that really helped me too. sort of get knowledge on it. And like just to educate yourself on like, certain topics so that you can speak eloquently and i found that it really helps like i think pastor craig was saying it like just talking to people about jesus it really does refresh you um so yeah just kind of do what the bible tells you to do and that's actually how um kaden and marcia they came because she was they were both searching at different times right they didn't even realize that like your sister she was looking at videos and saw videos of steven and then of doreen which that's the same thing. Like my dad and I, like when we hear Stephen's testimony, that's why we joke. Like my dad's more obsessed with him than I, like I really care about <laughs> Stephen, and we all say that, but my dad and I like love his story. Cause he's so broken. It was like once he was blind and like terrible, like crazy person, but then God delivered him. And that's what we want to see nowadays is like, we just see people, Oh, they get saved, but they're still like, Oh, the world's still so fun. But when you see those radical transformations, it's powerful. And same thing yeah. with Doreen Virtue. And like, so your sister, she actually, the cool thing with her story, she watched a video of Steven and then she started getting, watching Doreen Virtue. And then we yeah. had an interview with Doreen Virtue on Calvary Conversations and she saw that. And I think that's then how she saw our church and realized, oh, wow, yeah. they're in Tucson. And then she got saved on that Friday. They came on that or came on that Sunday or Wednesday. I can't remember. Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. And then wow. it was just so cool to just be able to see the transformation in their life and mm-hmm. how radical. The same sister that got you into all this was the same one who Christ used her mm-hmm. to bring you out. So and what, what's so cool, beautiful. you forget the other story. So 
so uh, Marsha got saved and was afraid to tell um, Caden. But Caden was, see, yeah. he had yeah. given, uh, you maybe explain that, but it's kind of cool. How, so they were like, he was like, uh, I'm kind of into God. You go, I'm kind of into that. Me too. Like, so, so. Okay. so Marsha, Caden, I don't know, Caden like, came up to Marsha and he was like, I've been thinking about praying. And Marsha was like, I've been thinking about Christianity. And then they were like, so it, yeah, it happened that way. That's, that's, <laughs> so good. That shows how powerful God is, how sovereign he is. Amen. So we... Yeah want you also to just we already said it before but any last thoughts to especially young people parents just advice you would you would give them of things that you've learned in the many years of being on this earth you know 15 <laughs> years christian almost six months <laughs> amen but it's it's i that's what i love about you. well i'll just kind of brag a little bit about you um not to make you prideful because right we don't like pride <laughs> yeah. um but I just literally look up to you, even though you're so young. Like the Bible says, don't let anyone look down at you because you're young to be an example to the believer in speech and life and faith and impurity. And when I see you in Trinity talking and like talking about the word of God and what you learn in the scripture, it spurs me. Like when I'm with my friends and we're just talking about stupid stuff, I'm like, these young girls are so passionate on fire talking about God. And it's like a spur to me, like, whoa 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 like look at this it's so beautiful so and you are like way above like that's where if you stay in your word like i can tell how much you do you are like invested you're gonna be the, in female, reading the word. female steven bankers yeah yeah definitely you're gonna <laughs> be taking Lena. my you're gonna be taking my job i see you I do you see want you. do you want her to be your friend Mariah? i do yeah, alex i did you know i am your friend now so uh, we're, we're sisters too but anyway that's what i think but any advice, any last words you would give to the listeners? Um, well, first of all, thank you so much. That encourages me as well to just keep on going. Um, and yeah, um, so some advice for parents. I feel like if you go to a church that's like Catholic, that I don't know, that speaks a language that your kid doesn't necessarily understand, send them to a youth group at least like you don't have to change churches just send them to a youth group or maybe just take a look at their netflix account because in seventh grade i was watching a tv show that was literally porn but i had no idea because my parents were not looking at it and they didn't you know they didn't yeah. tell me yeah. um or just look at their social media what they're listening to music is really like it really does have an effect on yeah. you um, and I don't know for kids my age put your phone away yeah. for like a day I'm learning you won't die know. and just like <laughs> and just read the bible or read something by C.S. Lewis just read something fruitful that just may bring you closer to God just give Jesus a try just literally try him out for like one day and just see what he can do with you Amen. that's yeah Amen. i remember as you were saying that about reading your bible i remember i just read this week a quote an old quote that said i can't remember who it was some old scottish guy but said sin this sin will keep you from this book but this book will keep you from sin Amen. and that's the key is to be in the bible right a lot of people want to be christians without reading the bible okay. but uh that's how you become a new age right yeah. but we need to really know the word of god right because as you said the truth will set you free and and we need to know the truth because jesus is the truth i always love when people i said a, a last week or a week ago i said uh, people say i'm not into doctrine man i'm just into jesus well Okay, doctrine is truth. Doctrine is teaching. You, it's like who would ever say, I'm not into good teaching. You're into teaching. We need to be into teaching, not just dead doctrine, right, like religiosity. Yeah. But really we want to know Jesus, right? We want to worship him in spirit and truth, right? You know, New Agers are spiritual, but they're not worshiping in truth, and we mm. need that balance of spirit yeah. and truth. Because we need to work, right, we need to know. We can't just worship God the way we want. We need to worship him the way he desires to be worshiped. And that's what really yeah. sets us free. And like you said, gives you the peace, right? Because you were worshiping in the way you thought was kind of your tweaked Christianity or whatever you'd call it, but it didn't bring life. But Jesus, mm -hmm. when you do it his way, as he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. life. Right? life. Yeah. Amen. So. So how can we pray for you? Because we're going to yeah. pray before we get. How can we pray for you? What are some things that maybe you're looking forward to? Obviously, you know, people say like, what is your five-year plan? But what we always tell people, it's like in five <laughs> years from now, I want to be walking God's will. 
Yeah. You don't so. know. Amen. You don't know what God's going to do with your life. Like, but um, what are some things that we can pray for you for? Um, probably to just keep me encouraged and on fire because I'm kind of at that plateau because I was like on fire and I was like climbing up this ladder and I was like, we're on top of the world. Um, and I just like constantly wanted to be with him. So right now I'm kind of like at that plateau where I'm like, eh. yeah. so maybe just for encouragement and just faith in him that he can deliver me through whatever I encounter. Mm-hmm. And just like to help me to give me the strength to get through school without being discouraged. Amen. Amen. I just I just heard um, someone say that you know love when I do weddings I don't do many weddings I'm one of those like a pastor who doesn't you know a cleaner who doesn't do windows I don't do marriages but much but uh, anyway that's a long story but I just want to say is that I always say today you love your spouse the least you'll ever love them because as you said the honeymoon yeah. woo but love really yeah. is a choice and love. Now God's maturing your love for him where it isn't always the tinglies, but now it's more of mature love of walking and discipline. And God will give you those tinglies when you need them and can't you know, need it, but he's wanting to mature you. It seems like when you get newly saved, there's all kinds of miracles, there's all kinds of crazy things, there's all kinds of divine encounters, everything's crazy, everything's, oh man, this person came up to me. But it's now it's like God's trying to mature you to where it isn't all about just, you know, feelings it's more about fact and it's a mature love you know i mean that's why they say a lot of people get divorced in about a year year and a half because about all the 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 lustful tingly feelings go away after about a year and a half so we want to that's why we're yeah god's love for you doesn't change i think people think they get really confused like they when they're saved they know like my identity is in christ he loves me he saved me and then all of a sudden like after a year or so they start realizing like does God really love me? I don't know. Like, but, I don't but feel be it. Think that's because but God doesn't it, But change. it's based on feelings. Yeah. That's and that's right. where we have to sometimes just say, I know. I love what one person, you know, my wife, Teresa, is struggling with cancer. But it's like I love what one pastor, Pastor Chuck Smith of Calvary said. He's not with the Lord. But he said, don't give up what you know for what you don't know. Right? Because, mm. right, when someone dies who you love, right, like your grandpa, people go, why? how could God do this? Why? How could this be if God loved me? But you have to go, no. God says, I'll never leave you, nor forsake Amen. you. I'm always with you. Amen. You know what I mean? We need to know, We yeah. need to stand on what we know, not what we don't understand, right? Yeah. And we tend to focus on, right, the devil, our feelings say, well, how could this happen? Or, you know, how come I don't have a boyfriend? Or how come I don't yeah. feel cool? Or how come my friends left me? Mm-hmm. But you have to, like you said, Jesus is my best friend. Even right, what did he say? Um, uh, I will never, you know, he sticks closer than a brother. I mean, he sticks closer than a best friend or a sister, and we need to know that and stand on what we do know. And back to what you said, reading the Word of God and memorizing those scriptures that encourage us. Right? You know, if, if mm-hmm. the devil's speaking something of you're worthless, we need to say, okay, what's the scripture that might encourage me? I am more than a conqueror in Christ. Or if God be for me, who can be against me? That we have a truth to speak against life like when jesus t- was tempted by satan what did he do he didn't go hey you stinker get out of here he spoke the truth to him and said no it is written and then what happened satan left Amen. and we need to know the truth Amen. not just to set us free but to also speak you know it's funny i'm can i preach here but the word rhema word Got one minute it's funny <laughs> the rhema word it says the sword of the spirit of ephesians 6 says the sword of spiritual word of god that's rhema word i'm thinking why would you need a rhema word in fighting the devil but it's you need to be led by the Spirit Amen. so you have a specific scripture that would speak against that lie of the devil. That's so you can say, did. okay, what what is the truth of God's word that speaks against Satan? Like, because Satan knows the word better than we do, right? Yeah. And he tries to tweak it like he did with Psalms 91. Mm-hmm. But to say, no, no, it's written this way or this is the truth and speak it. And that's why, like you said it so well, Alex, is it's so important that we know the word of God because yep. if we don't, we can be deceived by new age. We yep. can be deceived by the devil, and we can be discouraged. And it's amazing, as Mariah could say, how she was kind of high. Oh, this pastor is going to be on our show, the podcast. Ah. And then all of a sudden, the secretary, no. And then the devil saying, you're nothing. You're Give worthless. Up. And you got to say, no, my identity Amen. is not based on who's on the show because yeah. we have Alex, so we got the best Amen. it is. Now. But we need to say, hey, <laughs> our identity is in Christ, right? Because yeah. think about this. Amen. Paul, 
the apostle Paul who had everything, right? He was the she, one of the chief Pharisees. He was on the Sanhedrin, the Supreme Court of Israel. He was the man. Gamaliel said, you know, and in, in the uh, you know, in history says the problem he had with Paul is he couldn't give him enough books. But then what's the crescendo of his life? He dies in a Mambertine prison mm -hmm. in the death cell with all the feces and urine would go cuz of a cistern. And think about it, you go, "Man, God, that's pretty intense." But what, what did Paul say? He didn't go, I'm a, I can't believe this guy. He says, no, I fought the good fight. I finished the race and now lays up for me a crown of righteousness. He, he knew who he was in Christ. And I, cause I, I think I'd have a hard time dying like that. I think I'd have a hard time going that I would really test my identity in Christ. Right. I'd be like, God, this is what I get for yeah. serving you. But that's how powerful Paul's identity was in Christ to where he didn't get rocked by his circumstances because he knew who he was in Christ. Yeah. And to yeah. just not lay your treasures in up on your, subscribers and your followers here on earth because those were go will go away mm -hmm. like but mm -hmm. the only thing will last is our relationship with god and others so praise god before you were on a highway to hell like what you were just on the path to destruction and he was like saved you from that and now you're a mm -hmm. child of god and that's the one like you could lose everything you could lose your family but the cool thing like it talks about um we're talking about romans 8 i think it's 38 and 39 nothing no powers no anything can separate us from the love of god mm. but satan will try to but Amen. he can't it won't separate nothing will separate us from the love of god but we want to pray for you right now and for any listeners who are going through the same struggle um that you are any young people any parents with any kids that are maybe going through things and they don't know how to parent their child um like you said the important things go to church parents too go to church um, make sure that your kids are plugged in, make sure they're getting accountability, that you're communicating with them saying, what, what are you going through? How's it going? And make sure that it's okay to discipline your kids. Like if they're doing something wrong, kids love it actually like, and not in the moment the Bible says discipline doesn't feel good when you're exposed, but in the end, when you're older, you're so thankful, just like you're thankful, right? There's things he has to refine you each day. Be like, Alex, don't do that. Don't listen to that. Don't watch that. Don't be with that person. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we're going to pray for you. And then the last thing I want to say, too, is that you have an Instagram that says Alex talks about Jesus, right? Is that we'll have it in the description below, but they can follow that because Alex just talks about Jesus. And I love that you have that for your Instagram, just being a good example to any young people or anyone who is looking on Instagram or stuff for the wrong reasons. You can speak the truth. But do you want to pray, Dad? Or? Yeah, I can pray. Why don't you close it? I'll pray, and then you close, and yeah. you make it good. And you got a new friend. You got Mariah's now one of your besties, too. So you got Mariah's I am. I love you yeah. as a You got another big sister. Yeah. So, anyway, am. let's pray. Father, I just thank you so much for Alex. I thank you for her life. I thank you for just her encouragement, yeah. just letting, as Mariah said, seeing letting her allowing you to transform her life, saying, I'm going to, the pastu of John 3, 16, and for, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him would not perish. And that word believes means pastu, putting all your eggs in God's basket, having no plan B. She's not a Christian and new age. She's now a Christian. And thank you, Lord, that when we do that, you radically can change us. You can turn someone from Paul, to, from Saul to Paul. You can take off the blinders. And we just thank you for that. And we just pray for a hedge around her. Lord, we pray especially right now, as we know, because of this podcast, the enemy is going to try to attack. Yeah. But I pray right now you would put a holy hedge around our sister, that you would encourage her spiritually, that you would just cover her afresh with the precious blood of Jesus, that the enemy would not be able to oppress her, would not be able to vex her. And that she's done before. She would know the authority she has in Christ to just come command any oppressive spirits that would try to oppress her, discourage her to say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be gone. And we pray, Lord, we stand for Alex. We pray, Isaiah 54, 17, that no weapon formed against her shall prosper or prevail, Lord. We know the enemy is a sore loser. He wants to try to, he knows he can't take her salvation. He wants to kind of stumble her. But we pray, Lord, you would just put a holy wall around her. You put just a holy firewall around her and that a hedge around her that the enemy cannot penetrate. So bless her, strengthen her, and continue to use her and let her know that she has a family here in Tucson that loves her, a church family that prays for her. She's got her sister, she's got her brother-in-law, and so she's got Trinity, she's got Mariah now, uh, another big sister, and so Lord bless her. 
Overwhelm her with your loving kindness. Overwhelm her. Give her good Christian friends up in Phoenix that she can pray with, that can spur her on, as it says in Hebrews, to love and good deeds. And Father, I pray for others. There's many Alexes mm. out there. Yep. There's many guy Alexes out there that are just hurt, that are just feeling alone, that are just feeling uh, not sure of their identity. And this world mm. is saying that right is wrong and wrong is right. Yeah. And I just ask, Holy Spirit of God, I stand on the word of God. I stand on Romans 520 that where it says where sin abounds and we see sin abounding in these last days. Your word says where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. And we pray for that. Lord, we thank you. There'd be many more stories of like Alex, where you, Father God, snatched her out of the miry pit and placed her on the rock of your dear son. Let her testimony, this testimony of what you've done in her life, may it touch many people Amen. and may it set many captives free that they wouldn't just be like Mariah said, they wouldn't just be, oh, I'm a Christian, but I'm a new age Christian. I'm a Christian and I'm a I'm kind of a Satanist. I'm a Christian and I'm into tarot cards. No, I pray for radical, true, biblical Christianity like what you're doing in Alex, just that Christ is being formed in her. And I pray that you will use her testimony to mightily touch many people and many people come to know Christ. And people maybe who are on the fence or people who are on, have one foot in the world, they're the, the prodigal son or daughter, one foot in the world, one from the church. Lord, may they get over and become hot for you. You say, I wish you either hot or cold, but since you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out. Help them to become hot. Help us as a church. Help us as the church of Jesus Christ to be hot for you, Amen. to live pedal to the metal, radical for you, all out. That's what, as, as Mariah and Alex were saying, Gen Z hmm. is radical. Lord, we were hippies. I was pretty radical, but it seems like Mariah's saying she started Gen Z, so she knows. But Gen Z, let them be radical for Jesus. Yes. Let them be on fire for you and not prideful, but a holy zeal, as your word says, with knowledge to really spur people on, to really be able to say like Paul in, in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Let them be, let them be example of purity and truth and honesty, as Timothy says. Let them flee youthful lust, be able to be an example, even to older people like me, of that it doesn't matter your age. You can be a radical follower of Jesus. And I thank you for Alex, and I thank you for her life, and I thank you that Satan was not able to steal her and kill her and destroy her. But you, Jesus, John 10.10, 10, you came and you just overwhelmed her life in a good way. And you gave it, you have given her life and life more abundant, her life to the fullest. And I pray you'll continue to do that. And even though her love is kind of maturing right now, the tinglys are going away, I pray she'll just have a depth of love that is mature and is the right way, Lord. Bless her keep her and strengthen her and thank you for her family i pray for her parents lord yes, draw her god. parents to where they wouldn't just be the the second timothy 2, 3 5 they wouldn't just be have a form of godliness but lord they would really know you they would really love you and yes, draw god. them use these use marcia and alex to minister your love to them yes. to minister humbly the example that they would see there's a difference between being religious and having a sincere relationship Amen. so bless her parents Pray you draw them to true biblical salvation. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us on Calvary Conversations. If you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you'd like to listen to us, wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. Also, make sure to check out Behind the Scenes on Instagram at Calvary Conversations. You can also donate to Calvary Conversations in the description below. Just click on the thing that says donate and you guys can give a one-time gift a monthly gift whatever you would like that would bless our podcast also please make sure to check out our sponsors mission heating and cooling their website is in the description below as well thanks so much guys and we'll see you next week